Hey folks, it's Ardwolf. I'm back with another video about Wargaming Storage Solutions. And this is where I get to a game where the components really don't fit in the original box. Now, part of the issue is, for me, that for this game specifically, Commands and Colors Napoleonics from GMT, um, I do have a couple of the expansions, and some of the components from the expansions have gotten put together with the components from the original game. Um, nevertheless, um, I think because of the specific component details here, um, I think you'll have trouble fitting all this in the original box. I'll show you what I did. Um, for one thing, um, I'm, this is sort of a solution I'm still working on. This is a game that has a mounted map board, and now i got to get it out of the box. <laughs> Defeating my own stored solution. Okay, so what I did here was I made, and this doesn't really work very well for this particular game. Um, I'm experimenting with this whole foam core thing where we take foam core board and make inserts to fit the game components. And for this particular one, my idea was that I have one at the bottom that would you, where you'd store the, the dice over here and the cards over here and maybe some markers here, and then you'd have some trays that fit in with the units. Uh, it's a block game, if you don't know. Uh, but there's just too many goddamn blocks. So this is my French blocks right now, and they, they're in these sort of big hardware-y type things. I don't know who the manufacturer of this is, but you can certainly get these or something very similar to them at a hardware store. Uh, you see the line infantry. There's something like 15 units of line infantry here, which means there's about 60 blocks, something like that. That barely fits. This is the French blocks, uh, but every expansion gives you more French blocks. Sometimes new types of blocks, but sometimes just more like line infantry or light infantry or uh, uh, horse-drawn cavalry or whatever. Um, and so what I have for this particular game is one of these for each nationality. So I have one for the French, that's this one. I have one for the British, one for the Austrian, so on and so forth. The only set with really not very many pieces is the Portuguese. And unusually for me, because I normally don't want to deal with this, these cards are sleeved. Um, because these cards get a lot of wear and tear and this game gets a fair amount of play. So um, I felt obliged to sleeve the cards, which means that I don't have a box that will fit these sleeved cards uh, because everything that the local game store has that will fit sleeved cards has like dragons or Pokemon or some shit like that on it, and I don't want to deal with that. So these do kind of fit perfectly right here, and they come up right just inside the inside of the lip. But we also have the, the square cards here that don't fit. We have all these tiles, and these are, of course, a couple of games worth of tiles. But we also have, check this out, all this paper. Um, now, this is not all the paper that comes in all the, the three boxes of this that I have, but this is like a good half an inch, maybe three quarters of an inch of paper. So there's just no way for me to get this in there. Um, so right now, I've got this sort of stored this way, and then I sort of have to monkey with this baggie of terrain tiles to get that to work. And then I got the dice. These aren't, I, once again, I'm uh, super fussy about this. These aren't the dice that came with the game. These are made, I think, by Valley Games, specifically for Commands and Colors. They're wood. They're really nice. Uh, I wish they made similar dice for Commands and Colors Ancients. They or someone else did at one point, um, but they are no longer available, even though these are super easy to find. Um, of the Commands and Colors games, and in that category, I include Battle Cry and Memoir 44, uh, and whatever that World War I one's called, The Great War, I think. Um, not just the ones with the blocks, but the ones with the miniatures as well. This is my favorite. Um, I like the game a lot, but uh, in terms of providing a storage solution that uh, lets me fit all the components in the box, uh, I, just, I just don't see a way to do it. Um, I, I did my best here, and I just I, I can't get come up with anything but these. Um, the blocks are just too big, they're too bulky. What I was going to do was sort of make inset trays where each unit is inset into the trays. And I saw some of these pictures on Board Game Geek of somebody that did something like that out of insulation board. Um, and it looks nice, I, but it's even if I do that, it's still not fitting in this box. 
and if it's not going in the box anyway, I might as well just use these things. Um, once again, these are sort of the translucent plastic. These I got from a place I used to work. Um, they were throwing them away, and I got a whole case of them. So another situation where I've got the storage solution that's been sitting around for years. Um, right now, I have a couple of different games in this particular type of container. Um, one of which is Avalon Hills Titan, uh, because the counters are like one-inch counters, um, and I just haven't come up yet with a solution that uh, that I'm happy with. Um, if I'm going to use, if I only had the stuff in the core box for Commands and Colors Napoleonics, and I was willing to use baggies, I think I could get it all in the box. Um, but I've got a couple of expansions as well, and at this point, I don't think baggies are a good solution. Plus, here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 different baggies just for the French. So I would have about 1.6 million baggies in here, and I'm still not convinced that would work. Um, so if uh, if you happen to have suggestions about Commands and Colors Napoleonics, or Ancients for that matter, storage solutions, please pipe up in the comments. I know there's stuff on BoardGameGeek, I've been through all that stuff. Nobody seems to have a solution other than maybe if you just have the basic game. Um, this is a game I like a lot, the series I like a lot, so um, I'm going to continue buying the uh, expansions for this. Uh, and I'm just going to have to continue filling up these big trays, which fortunately I have an ample supply of. So uh, I would normally say I hope this has been helpful, but in this case, it hasn't. So I'm sorry about that, but uh, I get to gripe on camera about my woes of storing Commands and Colors Napoleonics. But hey, I've got the game. Um, and this I should point out, I haven't mentioned this, um, this is a 3-inch GMT box. This is the biggest box GMT makes that's like on the, in the bookcase range. They do some flat boxes too for stuff like uh, Europe and Gulf and Asia and Gulf are the only ones I can think of off the top of my head that were like that. And of course they have some smaller boxes for games like Battleline, but Battleline is just a card game. Uh, you almost don't need the box. Um, this is the biggest box GMT makes and uh, it's still not nearly enough to fit all this. And how it was even packed when I bought the game, I haven't the vaguest idea. So, I mean, all the blocks were just in a big bag, and that's that. Um, the foam core solution, however, is an interesting idea. And there are other games, maybe, that I may explore doing a foam core type solution for. The specific game that I'm thinking of at the moment is Twilight Imperium, which is a Fantasy Flight Games sort of one of their big box, wargamey type things. Um, it's a great game. Um, it's in a huge, huge uh, Fantasy Flight box. Um, and there's a lot of empty space in it. And I've actually got some of its components in one of these big trays too. So I'm thinking about a foam core solution for that. Um, but that's going to be like a major engineering challenge. Um, I have, and I have seen on Board Game Geek some folks who did really nice uh, foam core or other material like that, that light, like craft wood that you get at uh, Michael's or um, uh, Joanne Fabrics, for example. Um, that type of material uh, can be used effectively for storage solutions. It just didn't work with Commands and Colors Napoleonics, uh, despite my pretty insert um, that sort of keeps the board from rattling around, but really doesn't accomplish anything else at all. So, again, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. I think I'm not quite through with this series on wargaming storage.